Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a new video where I'm going to create artwork on a CD. This is an old CD that I haven't used in a while. I mean, it's a DVD technically, but CD, DVD, both of them would work because, you know, we have so many old ones lying around and I thought it would be a great idea to just create something on it. I am sure it's been done before. I haven't seen it done by anybody. I've seen people incorporate CDs into artwork, but not specifically a standalone one. But I'm sure it's out there and I'm sure somebody will comment about that. No need to tell me. I'm sure there is. This is maybe not so original, but I've been in a little bit of a slump. I haven't been able to create anything. And I'm just, I just had to kind of think of something that I wanted to do, something small and attainable. And what I thought, the first thing I thought to do is to take a little bit of string and just kind of weave it inside the hole as much as I can. I don't know. I just felt really stuck creatively so I figured let's start and do something about it I don't know how this will turn out I'm experimenting you know how much I love experimenting this year so I am going to just do this and the nice thing about it is you know how you always have to be careful with touching the back since this is artwork you don't have to worry about touching this it's gonna be okay so I'm just going to weave it through and then I'm going to get going on the rest of the idea that I have for this. Okay, once I finished weaving, I even added a little place that I could hang it later if I want to. I'm going to take some black gesso and I'm just going to cover it all. I could have done this before, but I might as well just do it with the black string. Okay, so I finished painting the disc with black gesso. Just a few minutes into painting it, I lost complete power. All The whole region lost power somehow for half an hour. So I went ahead and painted it behind the scenes. And what I did, I also created some molds and painted them in black as well using the black gesso. So I used some Prima molds, some from the redesign and some from Finnabar. This one is like a little lady. I did the these wings as well. And of course, I'm listing all the products below so you don't, can just focus on the technique and don't worry about which products I'm using. I will list each one of these below. I really wanted to include this lady in here and I do need to still paint a little bit on the edges. I just see that now, which I'll do with the black gesso. But what I wanted is I wanted a very layered area. Now, what I wanted to do is almost like um, it does look like an ornament, but truthfully, what I wanted is almost like an amulet. I feel like this lady she looks like a protecting angel to me and I'm feeling like I need to create her in order to hang her in my room to protect her protect me from different things I mean you can create any type of protector and I think she just looks the part and I think this will help me with my creative process which has been as I said a little bit on the down low so I am going to glue this and then I'm going to just fix the little areas here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use 3D matte gel. I want to do matte gel just because it's really important to do that so it does not become shiny around it. Now if you only have the gloss, gloss gel then all you have to do is first glue it and if there's any areas where you see some glossiness you can always cover them with black gesso. So you don't have to worry about it if you only have gloss gel at home. It's not a problem, especially the heavy gesso is only glossy. So you can do that. You can just use that and then cover it with black gesso. And then it takes away the shininess out of it. So it's really easy. I'm just adding some to the back here. I really didn't know where I was going with this project. And once I created... The mold for this uh, was for this lady. I was, I think, much happier. And I use amazing casting resin, which is really great to create molds. I like it because it's super, super fast. You just have to use gloves for it. And you can refer to my video on molds. Just look up, search my name with the word molds on YouTube, and you will find all the different ways that you can create molds. Now you can also use the new modeling material from Prima if you like working with clay. I have that as well, but I really wanted to create some fast molds. So I knew that I wanted to use 
the the amazing cast in resin but any type of resin will work you can just use things that will benefit you and that will help you like create your own projects so what i like doing is i like taking a, then a paintbrush and just making sure that you don't see the glue everywhere so I just kind of blend it in. It's okay if it looks white, I will cover that. But you just wanna make sure it's not lumpy. So I'm just holding things down while I press the glue down into the background. It takes away all the little lumps of glue. I never realized how easy it is to work on a CD surface or a DVD surface. It's quite easy to use and it's a great way to create a project a quick project or you can create an ornament with it or anything like that now that I have it all done I mean it's still drying so I have to be very careful but all I want to all I can have to do is just add the black gesso and it will cover all the white parts so this is what I mean by if you have the glossy gel don't worry about it you can always cover now you could let this dry easily without having to do that because it's matte gel but I'm impatient so I want to faster and make the process faster it is weird how losing power for half an hour makes you really conscious of what things we have and what we don't I was trying to fake I was trying to create this project not only could I not film it but I could, I said, okay, I'll try another project, but anything mixed media related needs a heat tool for it. And I could not get the heat tool to work, obviously. And I was also didn't have a lot of light. I have a small window in my room. So I had to like, just work with whatever light I had. So it's really interesting that we, we should really appreciate what we have and all the amazing benefits that we have from having power. Okay, so there we go. She's beautiful. I love her already. And she's really, she's my protector, I guess. Yeah, I really like this. Okay, good. So I'm going to heat set this and then I'm going to use something to paint her. So to color this in, I really didn't know what colors to choose. I wanted to do the waxes, the new metallic waxes from Finabar. And... I just didn't know what to combine and one of the things that I've done on my YouTube channel is do samples of how these colors look both on black and white and these are the colors the samples that I did in another video which you can watch I'll link that below so this is the one that I created for the firebird so you can see how it is on black and on white so I can kind of see how they will look together so I like these having as I like having these as reference this is for the mint sparkle this one is for the Indian pink which looks a little bit purplish on the black which is okay because I didn't mind you adding some purple and I love the peacock color as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to color this I'm only going to use the firebird kind of towards the end first I'm going to do the rest of the background in these other colors i'm kind of going to combine them because i love combining the turquoises with blues and purples i'm getting some of my brushes these are the stipple brushes from finnabar and look how pretty this color is the colors are super super rich and so beautiful I really wanted to incorporate a little bit of this type of color. So I'm going to move these like this. And this is one of my favorites as well. So I'm going to start. And what I want to do is I kind of want to... Actually, before I start, I want to do something. I want to heat up the waxes a little bit. Heating them up makes them a little bit softer, which helps with blending. So it's just a little bit of heating up because wax becomes softer once it's um, used. 
And look how beautiful this color is. Wow. It's a stunning color. Trying to see. Maybe I want only a little bit of this one. Wow, it's beautiful. So I really wanted both of those colors incorporated. I was I needed pink, which I usually don't need, and which I surprisingly wanted pink, which is odd for me. Okay, it's still moving a little bit because it's not fully dry. I wasn't that patient on waiting until everything fully dries. So that's why you see the lady moving a little bit. And I apologize for that. If you want to fully dry it, then of course, don't do what I'm doing. Wow, now I'm thinking, oh, should I have even used the pink? Because it looks nice, but I think it would have been beautiful just with those two colors. It's okay. Now let's see what happens here. I'm going to cover her face. Sometimes I start something and then I think, oh, wait a second. I should have done this or I should have done that. Okay, it's easier for me to turn her around just because I'm right-handed. And you see that I'm using a different brush for each one. I just find it easier. But you don't have to do that. Let's do this side here. Oh, I like her a lot. I think I'm going to have to use a smaller brush here to get into these areas. So I do like the pink but maybe i should have done her all in blue i wonder if i could cover that i think i can blue always speaks to me and although i should have done i, sh I pink was kind of needed here for my soul i think the blue will really heal everything Yeah, that looks really, really nice. I don't even know if I need the Firebird one. No, I might need it her to make her a bit more shiny. Okay, so I changed it and I'm not using the pink after all because she looks so beautiful on her own like this. What I want to do is I'm taking a little paintbrush just so I could get into the inside edges here. It's hard to get here underneath. And I'm actually adding lighter color in the background. Usually it's the darker one, but I think I'm going inside the holes and I'm adding the lighter color. You can see it just kind of shines better. Okay, so there's my angel. Now I'm thinking to add a little bit of this one. Let's see how it looks. Just a tiny bit. Okay, so maybe I didn't need the pink after all. Let me heat this one a bit. It does make a difference when you heat it a little bit. Makes it softer. Oh, I really 
really like her. Okay, so now I think it needs to kind of illuminate the strings here. Maybe I'll use the paintbrush for it. Because I can be more exact with it. I just want to kind of add it on the strings themselves and that's it. And just a little bit on this. She's very special. So look at her. Wow. Okay, hold on. I always forget the top. So there she is, shining. Wow, I really love this combo. It's beautiful. The three colors together are beautiful. Loving it. Okay, so this is it. I mean, a quick project, really, really quick. I can't wait to hang her here in my room. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on how to create a little amulet or ornament with a CD or a DVD. And it's just so fun to do. And now I can hang her here. I just have to wait until she, everything is dry. And I just really like to just quickly do something fun with it using molds and using just a few textured elements. And of course, the amazing waxes. So thank you so much for watching. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. For more inspiration, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much and have an amazing day. Bye.